Hello my YouTube beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be testing out some brand new products from Wet n Wild. I just saw this launch a few days ago on Ulta, so of course I picked it up. So if you enjoy like review, new product kind of videos, be sure to give this video a thumbs up to let me know. And don't forget to subscribe before you leave, I do upload twice a week. So like I said, I do have lots of new Wet n Wild products. They're just, they're all new. I don't know if it's from like any particular line. They just all said new on Ulta. So I do have the new Bare Focus Tinted Hydrator to test out. I have a new concealer from them. They came out with a new brow product, which I like a brow gel that I'm super excited about. And then I also have their Cloud Pow Lip product and one of their newer Color Icon palettes. There's a bunch of different types of these palettes. I got the one that I thought was the most neutral and I would wear the most. They also had this. I have not bought a new lash curler in a long time, so I figured I'd test it out. It was like super cheap, but actually had really good reviews saying it was very similar to high end lash curlers. If you are curious about the products that I use in the video, I do mention everything down in the description. Because there wasn't any primer in this launch that I was like super excited about, actually there was one and it was called like the Impossible Primer or something, but it had amazing reviews and it was out of stock. And then the other primers were glass skin primers, which I didn't think went with my oily skin, so I did not get a primer from this launch, but I'm gonna go in with the Revlon Photo Ready Pore Reducing Primer. This is the primer I use with all of my wear tests just because it only smooths, just gives like a good base for foundation. It doesn't mattify or change the finish of the product. So the first product I have to test out is this Wet n Wild Bare Focus Tinted Hydrator. This retails for $5.99, so pretty affordable. It has hyaluronic acid and squalene in it. It is oil-free, sheer to medium coverage. It says that it gives a flawless, softly luminous complexion to promote healthy looking supple moisturized skin. I was reading the reviews for this product and it seemed like people with oily skin could wear it. So I was like, well, I'm gonna try it out. You know, you just never know how a moisturizing product is going to work on your skin. It could be great, could be horrible. I did get the shade Porcelain. It's the lightest shade that they have. And just for reference, I am pretty fair. I don't know if this is going to work for me. It looks a little dark but online it looked almost white in the tube, so I would not trust the way that it looks on their website. This is what it looks like on their website, and then this is the actual color, so definitely very different. It is significantly darker in person than it is on the website. This is a squeeze tube. Oh man, this always happens where there's like a bubble. Ugh. Looking at this, I am really glad that I got the lightest shade, even though when I was ordering it, I was thinking that it was gonna be too light for me. And typically I like to apply my foundations with a sponge, so I have my beauty blender here. If it doesn't apply well with the sponge, I will go in with a brush, but usually the sponge gives the best application. It says sheer to medium coverage. I got a good amount on my little dish here. Now, it's not applying super dark, Seems like it's going on pretty light, which is at, I think it could match my neck and I could be just fine. But when I first apply that, it does look a little dark. It's blending really nicely with a sponge. It doesn't seem like the sponge is soaking up too much of the product. You know how some foundations just get totally soaked into the sponge and you can't even see it on your skin? I'm not noticing that with this. And I assume this is going to be pretty tacky and I usually do a, like set down my face because I do have oily skin and we'll see if it actually helps to control the oil. I know some of the reviews were saying, you know, even if you had oily skin, it looked like it moisturized in all the right places, but didn't make you look overly oily. You get 0.91 ounces of product. So almost a full ounce, usually one ounce is standard but for $5.99, that's not too bad to pay for a little bit less than an ounce. Think that the shade is a little pink for me, but in terms of how light it is, I think it it's not too dark for me, you know? Again, it does say sheer to medium coverage, so I'm not expecting it to fully cover up right here, but I will say I'm getting like low medium coverage right now. Looks really soft on the skin, very blurred. Looks like it's sitting well on my skin as well. So here's how it's looking. 
Up close, it looks really nice, actually. I'm really surprised that it looks so nice. On the skin, it does look glowy. I definitely have a glow to my skin. Um, I think that's probably gonna go away once I set it down with some powder, but I'm not mad about this. I think it actually looks really nice. So the next product I have to test out is this Wet n Wild Mega Last Incognito All Day Full Coverage Concealer. I got mine again in the lightest shade. No, I got mine in the shade, like the second lightest shade because the lightest shade looked white. This is in the shade Fair Beige. I thought this might look better and even this is probably a little too light for me. Can you see the difference in tone with both of these? Like the, the hydrator is significantly deeper than the concealer and the concealer is not even the lightest shade in the range. So the, you know, the tinted hydrator gives me more of a BB cream vibe where there's not gonna be a ton of shades and it might not be amazing for a very fair skin. Even now I'm seeing that it is oxidizing a little bit just as it's sitting on my skin. It looks maybe a little, a little dark to match my neck now. So who knows, maybe this concealer is coming to the rescue. I don't know. Let's see what the doe foot looks like. Regular doe foot, not this ginormous one that you see on a lot of different concealers. Okay. Whew. That is fair. Let's see how this blends out now. <laughs> so blend it out very nicely, very easy to blend. It's not super full coverage. I'd say this is a medium coverage concealer because you can still see my dark circles. But you know, on a more natural day, as is... Most of this, it seems like this collection is geared more towards natural makeup. So, you know, paired with the tinted hydrator, I think it's probably fine, but it's not a full coverage Tarte Shape Tape kind of concealer. Yeah, I can definitely still see my dark circles, but maybe for a lighter coverage day, this would work out okay. So for my powder, I'm taking the Laura Mercier Translucent Setting Powder. This is going to mattify a little bit. So I don't think I could wear these products considering they say hydrating without some kind of powder to set down and help make them last on my skin. Doesn't seem like this concealer creases, which is nice. I, I do get that a lot with concealers. Usually they crease really fast on me but it looks really nice actually. Like it looks very natural. Now I'm gonna set down my face using the same Laura Mercier powder because it is tacky. Okay, I really like how both of these are looking on the skin. They look so soft. And I think I got more coverage from the hydrator than I was thinking that I would. Let's go in quickly with some blush, bronzer, highlight. I don't have anything new from Wet n Wild for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and do those real fast and I will be right back. All right, now that that's done, I think my skin looks really, it just looks really nice. Like I don't, I really cannot see anything wrong with either of these products so far. Now let's quickly do brows. I'm gonna take my Anastasia Brow Wiz, but I do have a new brow gel. This is rolling away. I do have a new brow gel to set it down with. So. Oh, I gotta pluck my brows. It's just like never ending. They grow back and are very inconvenient. All right, so I have here the Brow Obsessive Brow Shaping Gel. This retails for $3.99. Kind of looks similar to the Milk Makeup Kush Brow Gel that I use. It is a clear brow gel, but you can, I believe, get this actually tinted. I just feel like a translucent, like a clear brow gel helps keep your brows looking a little bit more natural and not so bold when you've already applied your brow pencil. You get 0 0.09 ounces of product. That doesn't seem like a lot and it's a tiny little container. We'll see how long it lasts. Okay, it's not clear. It's got this white stuff on it. That's not clear. Let's see if it's white on application. Okay, it was a little bit, but it's not like you work with it and it, you know, it becomes clear. But it, don't get freaked out when it looks white when you first apply it. Though it is weird applying it when it's white originally. <laughs> Feels like it is setting them down nicely. Like it's a thicker gel than the Milk Makeup one, but you just have to comb, really comb through your brows to make sure that the white is all gone. But I actually think they look really nice set down. We'll see how they, how it holds up, you know? I'm going to use the um, concealer as an eyeshadow base. Hopefully it works as one. 
as I'm applying the rest of this makeup, I am so, so happy that I got the lightest shade of the hydrator because it definitely has darkened. I wouldn't say it's not wearable, but I'd say it's a similar tone to the lightest shade of the CoverGirl Clean Matte BB Cream that I really love, but is like a little dark for me. We're zoomed a little bit closer. I do wanna go ahead and start testing out this Wet n Wild Color Icon Palette. I have the palette Nude Awakening. Like I said, there are different shades and like styles of this palette. You don't have to go this neutral. This retailed for $5.99. It looks like you get five matte shades and five shimmer shades. Here is what the palette looks like. Super neutral, thought this would be good for every day. Some of the other ones were a lot more colorful, more playful shades. All right, so I'm taking a big fluffy brush. I'm gonna go in with pretty much like the only matte brown shade that is a good transition, which is this shade right here. I don't see any names for these shades does feel like it takes a little bit to build up at least this shade going in a little bit heavier on the brush than I usually would in a palette. I do wish instead of this white matte shade or maybe this shade, I don't know, these two seem very similar so I would almost them rather take either the gray shade or the matte cream shade and give me another like deeper brown. That would have been good to have in this palette. All right, so it is it is showing up. It's just taking a little bit to build it up. Next, I'm gonna go in with a denser brush. Maybe take this maroon shade because that's kind of the next matte, deeper shade I can go in with. This feels a lot more pigmented than that brown. It just like doesn't go together. I don't know. It's like those two shades don't really mesh well together. I really would have preferred and even instead of that shade, this maroon, I would have preferred a deeper, maybe darker brown. But here we are, this is this is the situation. <laughs> I'm going to take maybe, I guess the same brush, I can just kind of like wipe it off a little and maybe go in with the gray shade because that's like the next matte. We're just working our way through the matte shades here. Maybe it's gonna mess it up, we don't know. Feels like we can't really blend and build these matte shades together. They feel disjointed in the palette. Here, here is the situation at the moment. I guess we'll go in, I kinda wanna take maybe this shade right here to lighten up the situation. It's very white. It's fine. It's not an amazing shade. It does look a little chalky. I'd say so far this palette's not blowing me away. Just kinda blah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to take this flat definer brush, go in again, I guess with the gray shade. I don't really want to go in with black. There's just not a like a middle ground here. There's either a really light brown or a really deep gray. Then I'm taking my pencil brush, going back in with that lighter matte brown shade and blending this out. So it seems like this palette just is really blah to me. I don't think it made an amazing look. So I think maybe I'd recommend skipping out on this. This just wasn't, wasn't amazing. And I definitely have better drugstore palettes than this one. So I have a few products left here. I have the Cloud Pout, Cloud Pout um, Marshmallow Lip Mousse. Then I have this Eyelash curler, so let's test out the eyelash curler. It says, this is the High On Lash Eyelash Curler and it retailed for $2.99. Looks nice and I figured I need a new eyelash curler. The one thing it doesn't come with is extra ones of these. You know, when you like run this, I don't know, when you use it too much and it starts breaking, it doesn't come with that. But I do, I think I do have more from previous eyelash curlers and it actually feels really nice. Looks cute, let's see how it does. Oh, it's a little bit wider than my current one, but it seemed to do a decent job curling. Let's see how it does after I apply some mascara. I'm taking my CoverGirl Lash Blast Fusion. I think I did a really good job curling. My lashes look very lifted. And you can't beat a really nice eyelash curler for $2.99. If this works the same as my Tarte one, I'm gonna keep using this one. <laughs> 
It actually feels like it really did a really good job curling my lashes. Like they don't just look okay, they look nice. All right, really, really like that eyelash curler. And this is like on its last leg. It really needs to be tossed soon because it's definitely running out. It's not as liquidy as it once was, but this eyelash curler made my lashes look really, really nice. And then the last thing I wanna test out is this Cloud Pout Marshmallow Lip Mousse. It retails for $4.99 and I have mine in the shade Marshmallow Madness. It was the only one that looked kind of neutral and not super deep. There was another one I wanted and it was out of stock. We're just going with this one. I don't think it's gonna match the look, but we shall see. This is what it looks like. It's cute, looks a little cloudy. Definitely think this is going to be more of a summery lip mousse, but we'll see. Let's try it out. Oh gosh, <laughs> that smells good. It smells very fruity. From what I can tell, it kind of feels like the ColourPop blotted lip, it feels a lot like that. It's going on very blotted E. You know, it's not super pigmented. This is how it's looking like after building it up a little bit. As you can see, definitely not super, super pigmented. I am curious though what the formula is supposed to be. It's going on very liquidy and matte at the same time. <laughs> It is supposed to be a light as a cloud, a soft matte, buildable and blendable formula. It has argan oil, avocado oil, and vitamin E to moisturize, as well as marshmallow powder and a sweet marshmallow scent. Yes, that is what I'm smelling and it smells really good. It says blend for a naturally diffused color or build for fully saturated color. So you can definitely, you know, apply a little bit and go in with your finger, have it be a little bit more faded. What am I doing? I'm not sure. <laughs> I am curious if it's in a set down mat because right now it's definitely uh, still tacky. While that sets down, I am gonna give just a rundown of some of my favorite products that I tested out and ones I would recommend to you. I would definitely recommend so far this hydrator. I don't know how it's gonna work on oily skin. So far, it's not getting super glowy. It's not looking like it's moisturizing a whole lot. It looks great on the skin, it really does. I will say though, go a shade lighter if you can than your normal shade because it is going to oxidize. The color that it is now, definitely looks a little deeper than when I applied it, but I do really like how it's sitting on the skin. I love how it looks. The concealer, I do really like. I think especially for more natural days, I think it pairs really nicely with the tinted hydrator. So I definitely use it again and recommend it if you are not a super high pigmented concealer kind of person. Brow gel, I like. I mean, it's set down, they feel like they're not super crunchy, but they do feel set down. It just kind of depends on, you know, if you're okay having it go on white and working it through your brows, it's kind of like, you know, like a dry shampoo where it goes on white, but then that it doesn't look that way at the end. That's what I say this is. If it lasts me a long time, I'm definitely gonna repurchase it because I'd much rather pay this amount than $20 every time for the Milk Makeup Brow Gel. But I do like how it is kind of holding them in place. So I'd recommend this for a cheap, like, clear drugstore brow gel. This I would definitely pass on. I think it's just fine. My eyes look, I don't know. I think really what made my eyes look better is this, not really the palette. The palette seems like the match just don't really go together. And yeah, it, it, it's just fine. The shimmer shade is just okay. It, I don't think it's anything amazing. I don't know if any of the other palettes would be different, but this I really love. My lashes look so curled and pretty. So if you're looking for another lash curler that's not super expensive and still gives your lashes a really nice curl, I definitely recommend this one. And then we have the Cloud Pout. Feels like it's a little bit more set down. It's definitely a color I would wear in the summertime or the spring. I could see this being really pretty in the spring. If they had more of a muted neutral color, I'd probably go for that. I mean, it's set down, but it's still slippy, you know? Like I can still feel like this is not 100% matte, but I do like how the formula, I really like the ColourPop Ultra Blotted Lips, feels very similar. And the Ultra Blotted Lips, dry down a lot quicker and look more powdery 
like right away rather than when you apply this, it does seem like it takes a while for it to dry down. And I don't know if it'll get to a full powder finish. So I'm gonna have to keep testing this out to see how I like it. And yeah, that's everything I tried out in the video. So I'd love it if you left down below. Is there anything that you picked up from the new Wet n Wild collection that you enjoy or anything that you feel like you would purchase from this video? I'm always curious to get your feedback, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up the video here. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.